Today's game is being produced and distributed by Cooper Sports Network. Any redistribution, retransmission, or any other use of this copyrighted material contained in this presentation is strictly prohibited by federal law. All rights reserved. features the Mary Hart Baylor University Crusaders and the University of St. Thomas Kell live from the college, since to the college campus here at John Ray Harrison Field on the north side of Houston as we get set for this matchup between the St. Thomas Celts and the Mary Hart Baylor Crusaders. Today's game being brought, brought to you by Cooper's Entertainment Group, your home of Cooper Sports Network and the leader in high school, junior college and NCAA baseball. Cooper Sports, we bring you to the game. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome in to Houston, Texas. We get set for this matchup. A little bit overcast skies, wind blowing out heavily to the left field corner, but we are to be in a good situation today for our second baseball game on the schedule. We'll get closer to the heart of the conference season coming up in a couple of weeks. But right now, as we get set for this one, Mary Harden Baylor coming in perfect on the season, 6-0, but more importantly, three wins on the road or on, at home against the uh, Concordia Team and you look at the Tornadoes going into that matchup right there, a very early ASC matchup, and winning all three games gives them a really a leg up here going early. Yeah, two sweeps to start the year. Both those sweeps coming at home, a lot of good pitching in those series for the crew from Mary Hart and Baylor. So they come in here with a lot of momentum. But of course, St. Thomas faced an unbeaten team in 3 0 University of Dallas last Tuesday night, and the Celts were able to come back and pick up the win in that game. Yeah, you get a 10-9 win in that game. Then they go on the road to play a two out of three series. Dropped a couple of games. Had a chances in the two losses they had. Picked up a victory to move their record to 5-5 five and five on the season. So I think that when you look at St. Thomas right now, sort of still finding their way. Dylan Lamb's going to be coming back either later this week or next week from a hammock bone injury. So he'll be back and ready to perform. So it'll still be a little bit of a bullpen by committee. We'll probably see six, seven relievers in for St. Thomas. As Solis will get to start once again. It'll be understandable what Coach Mike Strosky will do with his team and what he does. I would expect his starting pitcher maybe to go a little bit deeper now that he's already gotten in the conference play. They're going to start trying to solidify that rotation maybe a little bit tighter as they get closer to going into the heart of ASC play. Well, it'll be Keegan Simons on the mound for start this ball game for Mary Harden Baylor, a young man who's not pitched on the year. It's an opportunity for Coach Strosky to maybe get a look at some of his younger pitchers as they he has a very experienced pitching staff. And, I, and if you're Keegan Simons, you're hoping to get at least a spot maybe in that middle relief area when you go into conference play as the crew try to fight for a conference title. In well, as we'll ASC. take a timeout, come back live here from Houston, Texas. We're at John Ray Harrison Field on the campus of uh, San Jacinto College on the north side here on Uvalde. As we'll take a timeout, come back live on Cooper Sports back after this.
for the start of this one here from John Ray Harrison Field on the campus of San Jacinto College North. Remind you to take the time to like and subscribe Cooper Sports on our YouTube channel while enjoying our live and on-demand content. Let us know where you are during the game from the live broadcast using our interaction and Cooper Sports. We bring you to the game. Larry Cooper along Kyle Nickel back live here from beautiful John Ray Harrison Field. And we talked about coming to this facility and David Wood taking over a program that has seen three coaches basically it's sort of like the Pittsburgh Steelers here you had Wayne Graham then you had coach Arrington and now David Wood taking over really the third coach probably had in about 35 years yeah obviously great stability in this program a, a program now going forward be known as the Ravens though then of course this history has been known as the Gators and the San Jacinto Gators have six national championships on their resume and a over 20 trips to the, the Junior College World Series up in Grand Junction, Colorado. And, and I think that would, e the name change isn't going to change how good San Jack's going to be as a baseball program. They're always going to get a lot of talent from the Houston area, and it goes from East Texas to the Klein Katy area, down south going into the Brazos, Brazoswood, uh, Pearland, go, going into the Clear Creek area. You're, you're, they're, they consistently get talent, and they always get a little bit poached by Blinn, Angelina, Galveston College in the area, uh, uh, Alvin. So you've got really a lot more junior colleges than you even do Division Three and Division One teams here in the area. No question about it. There's a deep pool of talent. Above, and you don't even have to get the blue chip of the blue chip guys. You get a lot of red chip type of athletes. And you put together a very good, a very good team, a very competitive team in a very competitive, in a very competitive division in the south zone of Region 14. Mary Harden Baylor coming in from Belton, Texas, playing all six of their home games so far to start the season, getting off to a good start. It'll be a question how they get here on the road because a little bit different environment. It's a good hitting background, a very uh, symmetrical dimensions here at John Ray Harrison Field at Annie Pedden Park. And I think that when you look at it, it, we saw last week in the game, the wind did not really favor any balls traveling. It's going to favor a lot going out to left field today. As hard as the wind was, we saw last week, it's it's 20 to 30 miles an hour in gusts sometimes this evening. Absolutely. If you can pull the ball down that line, if you're going to have a chance to really hit it, out, hit it out here. If you look at this lineup for Mary Harden Baylor, a lot of, like, a lot of guys hitting over. Have, in fact, five of their starters so, so far are hitting over 400 on the season and have a couple hitting at 500. Again, it's a, obviously a minimum number of ABs because they only played six games on the season. But these crew team comes in here swinging some pretty hot bats. And I think when you look at a game like this, it's sort of, again, what we saw with UT Dallas last week, a team picked to finish second in the conference uh, in ASC play. So you'll see a lot of SCAC, ASC matchups in the preseason getting ready for the, or what would be the non-conference portion of the schedule, getting ready for the conference schedule coming up. It's a little bit early we saw that matchup with Concordia being so early in the season. Usually you don't get into your conference games till at least the middle part of, of March, and you'll see that with St. Thomas coming up in a few weeks. But more importantly, you, you sort of get the, the feel, especially for your pitching here early in the season. Well, it was unusual, kind of noting that playing Concordia in that series in the second weekend uh, the re of the regular season, so a chance for Coach Strosky to get a look at probably his top line pitchers in that series as they got the chance to get that home sweep of their rivals from Concordia. As we'll take a timeout, come back live here. We'll give you starting lineups and our opening pitch coming up at the bottom of the hour, coming back live on coopersports.net.
Hagen. The cleanup batter, the first baseman, number four is Rhett Gross. Batting fifth, the third baseman is number 16, Riley Bender. Batting sixth, the center fielder is number two, Caden DeBardini. Batting seventh, the catcher is number 48, Carson Riley. Batting eighth, playing second base, number 44, Eastman Klein. And batting ninth with the shortstop, number 29, Blake Gonzalez. So it'll be Betts in left, Calvert in right, Hagen DHing, middle third, Gross first base, Bender at third, DeBardini center field and the bottom three Riley catching Klein at second and Gonzalez at shortstop and setting the defense four to nine on the card for St. Thomas it'll be Mason C behind the plate Dylan McKee at first base Jared Smith at second Armando Rocha at short Alex Trin at third base in the outfield Israel Fields in center field he's flanked in left by Kyle Bearden and in right by Timothy Manziel dimensions here at John Ray Harrison Field at Andy Pettit Park is 3320 down the line, 375 to the power alleys and the scoreboard out in right center field with the flagpoles, and 395 to the 20 foot hitting background in straightaway center field. And let's give you the numbers on Sebastian Solis. This will be his fourth appearance of the year, second start. He has a 579 ERA, four and two thirds innings work, five hits, six runs, three of those earned, three walks, and two strikeouts. Our umpires for today's game behind the plate will be Andrew Chumley at first base, Matt Herrera, and at third base, Dan Latham, the officials assigned for this one for the SCAC and the ASC. And the right-hander Tyler Betts leads things off. Takes a fastball right down the heart for strike one. Betts coming in, hitting 455 on the year in six starts. No home runs and one run batted in. 556 on base percentage for the leadoff hitter here for the crew. And a breaking ball down and away, ball one. He was able to get the fastball early over in the game last week in the win over UTD. He was not involved uh, in the decision against the Comets. And that one misses down and away. Curveball yeah. did not miss by much. Tyler Betts, the sophomore out of Round Rock High School. One of the very solid programs in the Austin area. 2-1 pitch. That one's to be driven foul down the right side. Yeah, that used to be one of the powerhouse programs in the state under Coach John Langerhans. So Lee's the right-hander out of Shadow Creek High School in Alvin ISD. It's been Westwood and Stony Point that have really been the Bell, po Bell Cow programs out, out of though, that district. Round Rock has been a playoff team, but not quite the powerhouse they were. Say, in the early 2000s. Right. Breaking ball <laughs> just, low, much. just low. Count is full now, three and two. So payoff pitch coming here from the right-hander Solis. As Betts trying to get on here to lead things off. Swing and a tapper foul. Yeah, just got enough of that to stay alive. So Betts will get another look at a payoff pitch. On a windy night, wind can get blowing out towards left field, left center, and brisk about 20 miles an hour. Solis sets. Another 3-2 pitch. That ball grounded back towards second. Backhanded by Smith. He'll go to first in time to retire Betts. Yeah, good job getting over there by Smith to get to the backhand side and be able to come up quickly to make the throw against the speedy Betts. And this will bring Cameron Talbert to the plate. A 462 hitter on the year. No home runs and eight runs batted in. Does have three extra base hits among six hits so far on the year with two doubles and a triple. Calvert out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, Bishop Kelly High School. So one away here in the home top half of the first inning. St. Thomas wearing their black jerseys today with the scripted Houston across the front and gold UST. And the all grays with the purple numbers and letters for the crew. Good breaking ball in there for over the knees, strike one. So he's looking at the Pitch card on his left wrist. 0-1 offering is going to be a little high. Yeah, a little bit over the top on the fastball there. Evens it up at one ball and one strike. One one pitch, fastball catches the outer half for strike two. Yeah, good job framing there by C to get that call on the outside half of the plate. 
One ball, two strikes. And a breaking ball down and away. Good job by C getting out there for the block. Two and two the count. Down even. Alpha playing pretty deep in both left and center. Throwing shallow and right. That fastball stays high. And they'll fill it up against second batter in a row to go full. Interesting here at John Ray Harrison Field around the plate area, plus about 15 feet up each line is AstroTurf, a, the next play stuff. And then the pitcher's landing area, also artificial surface. And that one called That's strike. That's a perfect pitch. Called strike three on that as he lit up that outside edge for a strike out of the ball game for Solis, and there's two outs. And I think that Talbert sort of gave up on that pitch, and he was sort of doomed as soon as that came across the plate. And here's the designated hitter, Carson Hagen. He's a 455 hitter on the year. One home run and eight runs batted in. A 556 on base average. Again, a lot of a lot of hot bats in this lineup so far for UMHB. That ball down and in for ball one. Junior out of Arlington High School, former Colt. In the Dallas Fort Worth area. So far, 14 pitches in the inning for Solis. See how long he, he pitched a couple of innings last Tuesday. It is probably expect a s similar way to navigate this game. A uh, grounder and on a hop to Smith. He'll throw the first in time. So a good inning as Solis retires to side in order. And we go to the bottom half of the first inning. It is UMHB nothing and St. Thomas coming in the back. He'll lead off with his left fielder, number two, Kyle Bearden. Batting second, the second baseman is number 16, Gerard Smith. In the third spot, the catcher, number 25, is Mason C. Batting cleanup, playing first base, number 18, Dylan McKee. In the fifth spot, the right fielder, number 44, Timmy Mansell. Batting sixth, playing third base, number 10, is Alex Trin. Batting seventh, the DH, number nine, Augie Anderson. Batting eighth, the shortstop is number seven, Armando Roca. And batting ninth, playing center field is number 17, Israel Fields. And looking at the lineup card defensively for Mary Harden Baylor, it'll be Carson Riley behind the plate, Red Gross at first base, Easton Klein at second, Blake Gonzalez at short, Riley Bender at third base in the outfield. It'll be Caden Ribera Dini in center field, Tyler Betts in left, and in right field is Cameron Talbert. And Keegan Simons on the mound making his first appearance of the year, first start. And first time to be on the mound this season. If he'll face Kyle Beard and he'll throw a strike in there for a count of 0 1. Very tall young man when you're looking at Keegan Simons. Beard in a 231 here so far in the first 10 games of the season. No home runs and seven runs batted in. Six foot four, 190 out of Concordia Lutheran in Tomball, Texas, former Crusader. So he's just changed the, the names the same, but the jersey color is a little bit different. Navy blue to the purple. Oh, and two the count. And Simon's little crossfire fastball misses away. Uh, that was clearly a waste pitch from the way the catch Riley set up. He was well into the opposite side batter's box. Simons comes set, working from the first base side of the rubber. There's a breaking ball. It's going to be looped out in a shallow That's look. It's going to drop, and it will for a base hit. So a soft serve single out in the left field for Bearden, and he's on to lead things off in the bottom of the first. That's a tough way to give up a hit with two strikes on the hitter. He sort of left a breaking pitch up there, and Bearden was able to fight it off over the shortstop to get the 
single to lead it off. Frustrating as a pitcher, you get a soft contact, but he's able to find some green grass. So now here is Gerard Smith hitting 206 on the year, no home runs and three RBIs. There's a couple of doubles. I cut that and I hit him. And I hit him on the hand. Yeah, I look, I hit him on that left hand. So, so, so a hit and a hit batter. Yeah, I'll come to make sure he's okay. He took a pretty good shot to that hand. And I was going to say that Bearden's a threat to run. He got thrown out in the first inning of the ball game last weekend against UTD. And they may spray some of that cool spray on it. Find out about the grip on this hand. Verify exactly where it hit him because it can hit you on the back part of the hand and not be as damaging as it is yeah. if it's on the fingers themselves. And yeah, remember, Jeff Bagwell broke his hammock bone getting hit in, that, in the hand a couple of times. And then he actually did a little invention where he put a little pad on his hand to try to. Not sure what the meeting of the umpires is here. I don't think that there's any intention, intent here, clearly, by the, the pitcher, Simons. There's no no way he wanted to put it two on with nobody out. And they're checking to see if, I, if maybe a swing or he pulled the bat back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and they're gonna say he's he's safe at first. Yeah, so, so they could. Yeah, because he sort of he sort of looked like he was gonna lay the butt down on the sacrifice, but he quickly saw that pitch riding up and in, and he had had no chance to get out of the way, and basically the bat sort of moved itself out of the way. So here's Mason C. He's hitting 300 on the year, one home run and 10 RBIs. See the okay. senior out of Lake Jackson, Texas, out of Brazoswood High School. And a breaking ball is upstairs. Pearson had a huge lead there. If he goes, he probably still is third base. Former Brazoswood Buccaneer, and that's a very good program down there in Clute Lake Jackson area. Want to know the count? That ball lined out of right field side. This could drop in, and in fact, good job getting over there. Beard Another will tag, though. As they'll put runners on the corners, and the ball gets away in the middle infield, but not far enough for the runner at first base to advance. Good job. Good job by Carl. If, if Smith probably moves immediately once he sees that ball get away, I think he's okay to go down to second. But once he hesitated, there was no chance to try to risk it and get out number two on being thrown out at second base. Talbert got a nice jump on that one as he came over towards the line and was able to make the running catch, but I did allow Beard to tag and move to third. So runners on the corners with one out, and this will bring Dylan McKee to the plate. He's got also a really good start so far at the plate with six home runs and 16 RBIs, 289 average. That ball had, down and away. Had a huge hit in the comeback win on Tuesday night in the eighth inning of that ball game. McKee's OPS so far on the year is a very healthy 12-16, 400 on-base percentage, and 8-16 slugging. Well, the RBI, the two RBI double, which was the game-winning hit. A little slider there misses outside, 2-0. and oh. Yeah, sort of a crossfire motion there by the pitcher came across his body and kept it up and away. And working that first base side of the rubber. Good speed on the bases. I had that, look, I had that hit, hit, too. Yeah, hit him on the leg. The second hit batter of the inning, and it'll load the bases. And so the wildness in this inning for Simons getting himself in trouble. Remind you to watch all your favorite sports and athletes live at any time on demand on Cooper Sports Network on our YouTube channel. Follow Cooper Sports and watch all the action again when you want. Click the live button and scroll down to find your favorite games. Cooper Sports, we bring you to the game. Here comes Timothy Mansell. Hitting 379 on the year with one home run and six RBIs. Has a teammate on every base, and there's a called strike. <laughs> and that looked like it might have been a little low, but the umpire gives him the benefit of the call, and Simon's ahead in the count. Alpha shifted a little bit to the pull side here for Mansell. A swing and a miss on a high pitch. And he struggled a little bit with his bats in the game last Tuesday. It looked like he wasn't seeing the ball well. There's some players... Even Mason C. admitting that he has trouble a little bit in the dusk when it's just getting too dark. You know, set up away, and Mansell lays off. The yeah, pitch he, away. he thought about offering at that, but it did a good job laying off there, and he's sort of counting his blessings up there. And Riley set up away for that pitch. No place to put Timothy Manziel. Yeah, base is full of Celts here. A, a couple of hit batters and a base hit, and there's a swing and a miss. That's a big strikeout for Simons. And the senior out of Summer Creek goes down for the second out of the inning. First strikeout of the night for Simons, and this will bring to the plate third baseman Alex Trin. 
Chen so far, 267 hitter, no home runs, and one RBI. The sophomore out of Cypress Ridge High School, the former Ram. There's a ground ball through the right side of base. Bearden scores. They're going to wave Smith. In fact, they're going to hold him. Yeah, good job charging the play by Taro. Ball got to him very quickly. Like, when you look at Talbert out there, able to come up with it quickly. So station to station gets a run home for St. Thomas but, as it scores Bearden from third. A big pick-me-up hit, though, from Trend to bring home a run. So the couple of hit batters come back to haunt the pitcher, Simons. So this will bring up the seventh batter to bat in the inning. This will be Augie Anderson, the DH. So far, one for five on the year, 200 hitter. Low and inside on that pitch. Anderson from the Woodlands Christian Academy. First left-handed hitter up there for St. Thomas in the order. How about down Almost in. hit him again. And good job by Riley having to go to the backhand side there to keep that from getting by. Yeah, no place to put Anderson here, the seven batter to bat in the inning, and he would love to get something into the gap right here and see if you can put Trent on the move from first base with two outs. Playing Anderson to go the other way, and the alpha foul ball is going to be a crowd at a short, and they'll go to the bag. Six on assistant on the fielder's choice. Be Gonzalez going to the bag to get the runner Trent. That'll do it. The Kelts do push across a run on two hits. There were no errors and three runners left on base. We played an inning here from San Jacinto College, and it is St. Thomas 1 and Mary Hart Baylor nothing. Back here to John Ray Harrison Field. Top of the second inning coming up, middle of the order for Mary Harden Baylor, Gross, Bender, and Dave Bardini. And remind you to take time and like and subscribe Cooper Sports on our YouTube channel while enjoying our live and on demand content. Let us know where you're watching if you have the opportunity. Email us at coopersports.net and watch the broadcast live here. At Cooper Sports, we bring you to the game. Gross stepping in is a 480 hitter, no home runs, but nine runs batted in. That ball drops down and away for ball one. Right now, Solis would love a one, two, three inning here to try to get his offense back out there to try to extend the lead. Gross out of Midway High School in the Waco area. 1 0 pitch, fastball catches the outer half. Probably about 15 minutes from the belt and campus where Midway is. Beautiful facility up at Mary Harden Baylor. Midway located in the suburb of Hewitt, just outside of Waco. This ball lifted in the air to center field. And that's gone. Yeah, that ball was going to get up in that jet stream, and once it got up in the air, it was going to carry out of here. So a home run to left center off the bat of Rhett Gross. His first of the season, and we are tied at 1-1. Yeah, that's the importance of trying to play add on there for St. Thomas. And so this will bring third baseman Riley Bender to the plate. Bender, a 320 hitter with one home run and nine RBIs.
breaking ball misses off the outer half. One ball, no strikes to count. Junior out of Kingwood High School, and we see a ton of Kingwood players littering. We saw UT Dallas last week and throughout the course of SCAC and AC, ASC play. Fastball misses upstairs. Count is 2-0. and oh. Saw a former Kingwood player also for the St. Louis Cardinals on Sunday afternoon in the lineup. Tool offering is in there for strike one. Pitch number 20 of the ball game for Solis. Swing and a miss. And Overpowered him with a fastball yeah. up there. Just came in with the hard stuff and Bender not able to catch up. Two two pitch comes back with a breaking ball but misses. So yeah. another full count, the third of the ball game. Got the side north in the first, but Gross with the leadoff home run to tie the ball game here in the top of the second. Payoff pitch. And that was call strike on the knees, and Bender's gone looking. Bender was looking for something else. He he got a pitch right there, which would have been a good pitch to hit, right. especially the opposite way, right. and he couldn't pull the trigger. Yeah, I think he was looking for a breaking ball and got the fastball. Second strike out of the ball game for so Sebastian Solis. Center fielder Caden DeBardini. Hitting 300 on the year, one home run and six RBIs. He bats from the left side. And a senior out of Conroe Oak Ridge High School, former Up, War Eagle. Tries to bunt and fouls it off. Also a player from Oak Ridge that was in that St. Louis lineup. A lot of youth on Sunday. Luke and Baker, I believe, was a play, right. he played at TCU. He got better as he went to college. Yeah, he was drafted by the Astros out of high school, but he decided to go to TCU. He bulked up quite a bit as that pitch misses. One of the top prospects in the Cardinals organization. I think he is the shortstop prospect. I think first base. Or first base. First base slash DH. They do have a good shortstop in Mason Wynn. Yeah, Wynn was a guy that was just that, pouncing around the Astros staff. That pitch misses outside, two and one. Release is ready. Fastball lined in the right field. That's going to be down for a base hit. Yeah, that was a pitch left up in the zone there. And he's going to take second base on the throw or try to and the throw off line. So a hustle double there for DeBardini. Second hit of the ball game, second hit of the inning for Mary Harden Baylor. So now the go ahead run in scoring position here for the crew. This brings up the catcher, Carson Riley. Yeah, that was hit just enough away from Manzel in right field that he had to chase that one down toward the scoreboard out in right center to allow the runner with good speed there. DiBardini, obviously, great speed in center field. Riley hitting 505 for 10 so far in the year. This is his fifth start in seven games for the Crusaders. Breaking ball misses down and away. Yeah, DiBardini trying to distract Solis there. He was jockeying away from the bag at second. Was stolen one base in one attempt. Uh, perfect so far in that category. 1 0 pitch, foul back. Pretty good cut of the pitch up there. Over here at the top of the screen. One ball, one strike. Outfield basically straight away here for. Riley wearing the same colors he wore in high school at Liberty Hill as a Panther. DeBardini taking a big lead at first. That ball looped out into shallow center. That's going to drop in. They're going to wave DeBardini, and the throw to the plate is going to be late. Yeah, DeBardini made a great jump on that ball. He knew it wasn't going to be caught by the second baseman, Smith, going back. And Fields had to chase that one in, and Solis has given up the lead. So a couple of runs have come home in the inning. And this will bring up the number eight here, second baseman oh, Easton Klein. Easton 
five hitting 364, no home runs, and three RBIs. Freshman out of Red Mountain High School in Mesa, Arizona. One of the few out-of-state players on these two rosters. This ball lifted down the right side, giving Chase his man. It should be playable. And can't get there. In foul ground, who can't come up with it. Yeah, about six feet foul outside the line. The win was holding that up for Mansell to try to get over there to make a play. Great effort there by Mansell, but not quite able to make the play. Count is 0-1 now to Klein, batting from the right side here. So at least now up over the 30 pitch mark, so I would think this would be his last inning. We'll see what Coach Tori Peterson wants to do. Quick throw over to first and diving back in time is Riley. Mary Harden-Baylor has pushed across two runs to take the lead. Breaking ball is going to be a tapper down the third baseline. And Trouble. There's going to be no play left, and that's going to be an infield hit for Klein. Fourth hit of the inning, and still only one out. Puts two on with two runs already home. Again, one of those frustrating plays for a pitcher because you get very soft contact, but he puts it in a perfect spot. Where the third baseman Trent had tried to come oh, in and just did not have a play. So Blake Gonzalez, the shortstop, will be the batter. Gonzalez hitting 504 for eight on the year. No home runs or RBIs. That breaking ball, that's going to be a high pop fly on the infield. Calling, infield fly rule. Calling is the second baseman, and that will be Smith making the catch for out number two. So back up to the top of the order, and Tyler Betts, he grounded out to second his first time up. And again, playing deep and left and center. That's part of that, probably that wind. Mansell, a little closer in and right. There's a swing and a miss. Turn that ball over a little bit. Made a change up there from Solis. Riley on his second, Klein the runner at first. 0-1 the count near to Betts. That ball's cue shot. foul first base side. And got it on the hands and able to force that foul down that first base line. And so so leaves ahead in the count now, no balls and two strikes. Betts the seventh man to bat in the inning for UMHB. And strike three called as gone looking is Betts at the third strike out of the, of the game for Solis, but the crew put two runs on the board on four hits. There were no errors. Two runners left on base. We go to the home half of the second inning. It's now Mary Harden Baylor two and St. Thomas one on Cooper Sports.
Around your favorite games, Cooper Sports, we bring you to the game. As there we are, Mondo Roca to lead things off here. Under jersey number seven, 217 here so far in the year. No home runs and one RBI. Now there's a swing and a miss. In the count, no balls and one strike. Eight, nine, and one hitters, Roca, Fields, and Bearden do up against right-hander Keegan Simons. That fastball is over but low. Not even at one and one. That pitch rides in on the hands, backs him off. Two balls and one strike as Simon's coming in with a fastball. That ball lifted out into right field and giving chase and running it down is Talbert. So there's one down. And here's center fielder Israel Fields. Fields hitting 371 on the year with one home run and five runs batted in. And the left-hand hitter takes strike one. Swing and a miss. Big cut and Fields comes up empty. He's down in the count 0-2. Able to get on in that eighth inning comeback rally last Tuesday. They're setting up away. Fields lays off. Good okay. job taking a pitch yeah. off the outside corner. Yeah, that didn't, didn't actually didn't miss by much. Came ran back towards the play, but just a little bit out, just a little bit outside. One two pitch, breaking ball. That's going to be lifted out into center field. Going back on it, but playable for Gabardini, and he'll make the catch for out number two. So a couple of fly ball outs here. Back up the top, Kyle Bearden. He had a blue base hit, came in to score the Celts run. Bearden, a senior out of Spring, Texas, Klein Oak High School, former Panther. Program that was dominating at the 5A level in the mid-90s. Fastball rides a little bit inside. Under Coach Dell Westmoreland made a run to the state championship and lost a heartbreaking 2-1 game to Lubbock Monterey. That one is on the knees for a strike. The interesting backstory of that one, we had rain when we were in single location at Dish Falkfield at the time. They didn't start the 1A championship to 1 in the afternoon because of all the rain. The game between Klein Oak and Lubbock Monterey. Got him on the fist and popped him back foul. Out of did play. not start till 11.58 p.m. They took the, almost to the last minute. They had to start the game Saturday night because if it would have started Sunday morning, they would have had to come back Monday to play the championship game. And both coaches agree, we're not going back to the hotel. We're playing this one tonight. One, two pitch, swing and a miss as Bearden goes, chases a pitch away. Second Did not look comfortable in that at bat. Second strike out of the game for Simons and a one, two, three inning for the Celts in the bottom of the second. We play two, two, one, Mary Harden Baylor on Cooper Sports.
Sebastian Solis out for a third inning. So stretch him out a little bit more than yeah, we saw that, last that, that, Tuesday. A little bit more, a little bit higher pitch count here than what we saw last Tuesday night. Get a chance to work a third inning and former Shadow Creek Cal Shark. Calbert will be the batter, be followed by Hagen and Gross. The two, three, and four hitters do up for the crew in the top of the third inning. Here's the pitch. Fastball down and away for ball one. Talbert struck out looking back in the first inning. One of so far three strikeout victims all looking so far for Solis. There's a swing and foul back. Hold it back to the backstop. One ball, one strike. Breaking ball in <laughs> for yeah, a strike. Broke in very late there. Yeah, started out going at the batter, then kind of came back over the inside corner. One and two. Fastball on the outside corner, and that's another strikeout. All four strikeouts have been looking. Second time that Talbert has gone down on strikes. This will bring up Carson right. Hagen, the DH. Carson he grounded out to second base, so he's 0 for 1. And so far, Solis has held the top three in the order to 0 for 5. But, of course, that second inning was the one that got him with four hits in the inning, including that leadoff home run from Gross, who was on deck. And that one misses down and away. Things have pretty good command of the fastball as the breaking ball has been a little hit or miss. That one down in, ball two. Two and another count. Long look in by Solis. And the pitch. That ball lined in the right field, and it's going to drop and bounce in front of Mansell for a base hit. Fifth hit of the game for UMHB. And Solis leaving that too much across the plate there on that two that, and two pitch. Yeah, that was solid contact there by Hagen. Here is Rhett Gross. He had a solo home run to left field to tie the ball game to lead off the second inning. He's looking for his second hit of the night. And they're going to shift Gross around to the pull, well to the pull side in the outfield. And, and wow, that very easily, whoa, almost a balk there. They'll say it wasn't on Solis, and the runner from first base had taken like four steps away from his normal lead. Yeah, Hagen's got a pretty good lead over there at first, but he'll draw a throw. Now, he had a massive lead that last yeah, he was, opportunity. Looked like he yeah. was going. Yeah, if this was a cutout, he would have been in the well into the grass. So Lee sets up the letters. There's the pitch down and away, and that's going to get away from C, and that's going to allow the runner to. I don't think the runner was moving, so that's going to be a wild pitch to allow the runner to go to second. So Didn't look like he was going to go on the pitch. Bearden, he's a step off the warning track out and left. He's so oh. deep for this batter. C, like I initially he might have a throw, but then the ball got away from him, so there was no play left. So the wild pitch moves the runner down to second. Let's bring the corner infielders in here. As the pitch, bringing, swinging it with a breaking ball and taking off and stealing third without a throw is Hagen. Yeah, that and, was a stolen base. And that was on the pitcher, Solis did not check, and they got a, a huge a huge jump. One ball, one strike here on Gross. That one is down for a, a good ball. job by C keeping that in front. And right now, Solis would like a strikeout here with that runner in third and one out. So 
will be pitch number 44 of the game for Solis. Breaking ball is going to be lifted out into right field. Mansell now coming in, still coming in. He'll make the catch. The runner will tag at third base, and the throw is going to be offline. Off, li off the line. Had a chance right there because that was a – that was an aggressive send there. That ball was in the shallow right. Mansell was coming in, but he could a not. A better get throw gets him easily. Yeah, that would have been a. He may get that on the plate. That would have been a runner of an easily out, but instead it'll be a sacrifice fly and another, another RBI for Gross. His second RBI of the night, it's three to one. And there's no reason not to test the arm of Mansell. We've already seen him throw one up the line before in this ball game. And this will bring Riley Bender back to his second trip. He struck out looking in the first. Fastball in there for strike one. Down and away for a count of one and one. One one pitch. That's going to be line down the left field line, and this will be. I think he caught it. Oh, no, no he trapped catch. it. We'll say he trapped it. That'll be a double. A great effort out there in left field by Beard, but not quite like the Dave diving catch, and that will end up as a double for Bender. Yeah, Beard sort of circled it a little bit to try to keep it in front of him, and once he made the dive to try to make the catch, it seemed like he came up just a little bit short of the catch immediately. That's Hicks hits now. Here's Caden. Day Bardini. And the third extra base hit of the ball game for. This is Coach Williams, the pitching coach, out to have a conference. In fact, they'll bring the entire infield in. Score from college basketball, the new number one Houston Cougars leading over Cincinnati at halftime, 26-17. Couple other ranked teams in action, number 21 Dayton leading over Davidson, 40 to 27, and number 16 Kentucky trailing Mississippi State at halftime, 43 to 35. We got a pinch hitter here, it looks like, number two. Uh, in fact, it is the Berardini's. So. Not sure what the home plate umpire was signaling there. Dave Bardini with a runner now at second base as the crew trying to add to this two run lead. Pitch from Solis down, good stay, able to keep it in front of him. Yeah, almost far enough away from the runner to try to move from second base. So the count, one ball, no strikes. Dave Bardini had a double and scored a run in the second inning. Looking for his second hit of the night. Already six hits in the ball game for Mary Harden Baylor. Pitch from Solis up high. Yeah, Solis just wild enough to get himself in trouble here. Has not been able to find the strike zone as efficient as he did the first inning. Was hit around the second inning for the two runs. Two a pitch comes down and then ball three. Yeah, almost hit him in that lead leg. Closing on now 50 pitches. You have to wonder if probably 50 might be about the outer limit. I think if Tory Peterson may want to have Solis throw in this game. Well, it's and interesting to see what Solis is going to. His role is going to be once we get into conference play with the three starters. Is yeah, we, he going to be the long yeah, man? We, yeah, we talked about bridging the, from the starters to the back end of the bullpen. There's a strike call. That might be the biggest issue for this team because it looks like offensively, I think they're going to be able to hit. And I think the weekend starters are going to be, should be very solid as well. Three one pitch. There's a swing and a fouls. I'll bring the cow full. Solis, one of the contenders to be a maybe that one of those bridge relievers. Guy can work the sixth and seventh inning. 
Also, yeah. emergency starter if you need one because of injury. Right, you may see him start some of the during, when you get into conference play. You'll have some of those non-conference midweek games. You see him start some of those games. Payoff pitch has to be lifted foul down the third base side and over the dugout. Seventh pitch of the bat coming up. This will be pitch number 50 of the ball game for Sebastian Solis. He is laboring out there right now, but trying to prevent any more damage. That ball hit through the right side. That's going to be in for a base hit, and they're going to wave the run around third, and Mansell's throw is going to be cut off. And so an RBI single for Some Deverdini. clutch hitting here for the crew. His second RBI of the ball game. That's hit number seven. And they're trying to get Solis out of this inning. And a 4-1 lead now for Mary Harden Baylor as they played a back-to-back two-run innings. And here's Carson Riley. Riley singled his first time up. They were Riley had, in fact, had an RBI side. There goes Dave Bardini. Throw down to second base is going to be, it's going to get through into center field, but D. Bardini will hold. Dave Bardini will hold at second. His first stolen base of the ball game. And it was Riley drove in the second run in that second inning, so he has one RBI, two for Gross, and one for Dave Bardini. 0 1 the count. Look back at second. Breaking ball is inside. Yeah, he's just trying to find a pitch to try to get an out here. He is really struggling with this command, especially of the off speed pitches. One ball, one strike. Quick look at second. There he goes. That ball will be fouled away. Yeah, hit and run was on with two yeah. outs. Well, he got a big jump at second base. He would have had third base stolen. If and Solis is losing all kinds of presence with the runners on base. He is not paying not, full attention to him. I think he may have lost a couple of miles an hour off the fastball. Now he's going from about 89 to 86. Breaking ball reaches and grounds out to short. Roke is there. Throw, strong throw is going to be past the first baseman, and that's going to bring home another run, and they're going to wave the run around second, and the throw to third base is going to be bouncing in. And so another run is in on the throwing error by the shortstop. As Roke's throw was low and got by the first baseman, McKee. Now the question is, is it an infield hit? initially or is it going to be an E6 so we'll say E6 then compound that with a second error that lets the runner move a around and there'll be an unearned run here so and builder's choice than an E6 so we'll have a new pitcher coming in as Solis's night is done so we'll take a break with the score Mary Harden Baylor 5 and St. Thomas 1 you're watching Cooper Sports Live.
And back live here from Houston, Texas, as we have the pitching change. New pitcher on for St. Thomas is Caden Bertrand, the freshman out of Tompkins High School. And Katie coming in, he has a 3.86 ERA. This will be his fourth appearance of the season. All have come out of the bullpen. He has pitched four and two-thirds innings. He allowed two hits, one run that which was earned. He has walked four batters and struck out two. And the former Falcon in for the first time in this one, trying to get one more out here, and it's been a very disappointing in inning and an end to the night for Sebastian Solis. Here, Easton Klein, he reached on an infield hit his first time up. 7-2 in the hit column in favor of the crew. And that ball comes inside, almost hit him, but it'll be ball one. Yeah, fastball up and in. Yeah, man, throws in the mid to high 80s. His importance is location. And yeah, might be able to touch 90 occasionally. That ball lined over the third baseman's head, and that's going to be another run as coming in to score will be Riley on an RBI single. In fact, they'll try to stretch into two, and he is going to be out. That's going to be seven to four on the put out at second base on so RBI single, and then thrown out at trying to stretch it to a double was Klein, and that will do it. But four runs come in in the inning on four hits. There were one, one error and no one left on base. We go to the bottom of the third as the crew have taken control of this one, 6-1 to one, on coopersports.net. As we move to the bottom of the third inning, it'll be Smith, C, and the key. Two, three, and four hitters in the lineup due up against Keegan Simons. And that one's over for strike one. And we close the book on Sebastian Solis. Goes two and two-thirds inning. Six runs, four earned, seven hits, four strikeouts. Did not walk or hit a batter. Fastball catches the outer edge. Strike two. And here, Coach Shosky had to like what you've seen so far from Simons, though, to be a ball. Count is one and two. Smith hit by a pitch his first time up. And a slow breaking ball, check swing, and it's going to be. Nice range there nice, to get to that nice, by Klein. Nice job on those soft liners. Easton Klein goes out and makes the catch for the first out. Did not have to really leave his feet. He just stretched it out and sort of bad hitter's luck there trying to serve that into right field. And here is C. He flied out to the right fielder Talbert back in the first inning. So looking for his first hit of the ball game. Swing and a miss as Simons rushed it up there. Yeah, tied him up on the hands there with a fastball. Outfield playing to the pull side here for C. Breaking ball down and away. And runs the count to one and one. Breaking ball is going to be lifted down the right side over to. It's to playable. And Talbert and is there. Territory. Does it was a couple, fair ball. A couple steps 
on the fair side of that line. So two up, two down. As now six straight batters retired by Simons. And here is Dylan McKee. He was hit by a pitch. So Simons, after a shaky first inning, has settled in here. Yeah, you go back to that first inning, the opportunity missed by St. Thomas to add to a one nothing lead at the time. And breaking ball down and away. A lot of arms and legs coming at you here with Simons. Pretty high effort delivery. As, as a lot of body parts moving all over well, the place. And he has that crossfire action, brings that arm across. And so a lot of crossfire, especially on right-handed hitters. Two balls, no strikes. That fastball catches the outer half. Two and one the count. And got him on the hands, tried to hold the swing. He could not. He went through. Yeah, swung at ball three there. And couldn't make up his mind in terms of where that pitch was going to be. Swing and a miss. That's some nice late movement on the pitch, and that's the third strike out of the game for Simons. Another one, two, three inning for the Celts. We've played three here from John Ray Harrison Field on the campus of San Jacinto. at admin at coopersports.net. Cooper Sports, we bring you to the game. We have a new pitcher, Nick Alamai. Right-hander comes on here for the Celts as we head to the middle innings. And to take you through the middle innings, I hand it over to my broadcast partner, Larry Cooper. Thanks, Kyle. As Nick Alamai takes over, Alamai, the young man, a sophomore out of Lira, Uganda, out of AVRS Secondary School. Made an appearance last week and pitched pretty well in his relief stint for St. Thomas against UT Dallas. This is another one of these pitchers that maybe trying to audition to get into that kind of bridge middle relief role going forward. And well, your back end is good with Cameron Craig oh, that's as right. your closer. They could, they need, especially with Sebastian now moving into the rotation on the weekend, they need an arm that can pitch those middle innings, the sixth, seventh inning to get the ball to Cameron Craig. And right now, Alamai's job just to keep this score the way it is, give his offense a chance to get back into this ball game. Nobody on, nobody out here. Top half of the fourth inning. No runs in the first, two in the second, four in the third for Mary Harden Baylor. Single run in the bottom half of the first for St. Thomas. 6-1 here as we go to the fourth inning. Alamaya, good fastball, but that has been something he has tried to harness, the control of that fastball. Wine and brings it to the plate. Swing a ground ball, third base side, high hopper, the throw across the diamond, and Trin will get it over to first base in time over to McKee for out number one. If you're Alamaya, you like getting a bad bear on one out, they would kind of get inside on him. Of course, that soft contact to the left side. One out in the inning. It'll go to the top of the order with Tyler Betts. The left fielder in the ball game, 0 for 2 with a strikeout and a ground out. Alamai gets the sign from Mason C. 
curveball swing and a miss. Fooled him on that pitch. Yeah, one of the breaking stuff right there. and looked like Betts was expecting the fastballs. And yeah, it came in about 10 miles an hour slower than what he expected. Way ahead of it. Owen won the count. Wine and a fastball this time on the hands. Swing and a miss, strike two. That's sophomore out of Round Rock High School. Former Dragon up there with nobody on and one away. Alamaya with a fastball. Swing and a foul ball right side over the St. Thomas dugout. Will hold the count at 0-2. And good job by Alamaya there to kind of get inside on Betts a little bit. Yeah, he is not afraid to work the inside half of the plate. And then some. 0-2 count with one out. That fastball ties him up on the hands and at the letters. Yeah, tried to ride a fastball up and in. Yeah, that was a split finger. Right? He just didn't get very – left it up in the zone. Obviously, the splitter, you want to get it down, tumbling down. Swinging a foul ball back as he has been all over the plate here. And that will keep the batter honest, I guarantee you that. They see that split finger fastball right. coming up at their eyes. One and two count with one out. As Alamai gets the sign, brings it to the plate. Once again, look like a slider up and in. Two and two the count. Cameron Talbert, the right fielder, waiting on deck. Alamai with the fastball. Grounded third base side. It's fair. Throw across the diamond on a hop. It's not going to be in time as it'll be an infield hit for Betts. You know, a little top bouncer right there, and Betts can really get down the line. Hit number eight of the ballgame. Second it's infield hit of the ballgame for the Crusaders. And all, he did, all he could do there, try to get rid of the ball very quickly, but didn't get much on it. And he well, that second hop and took him basically out of the play. He was not going to get a speedy runner going down the line like Betts. Yeah, he's about 10 feet behind the bag. No real chance to get anything on the throw. Alamai with the runner leaning, throws over, but just a little bit late. And he does have a good move to first base. Alamai checking that wristband to see that everybody's on the same page here. Runner on with one out in the inning. Big hole on the right side. Time call, maybe a balk. No pitch count. Or pitch. a pitch clock. A pitch so clock. it'll be a ball right. one. We saw that a couple of times in the game last Tuesday against UT Dallas. One ball and no strikes. Sets, pass ball off the outside corner, offering out, but bringing the bat back with Talbert. Showed bunt, but did not attempt at it. 2-0 and oh the count. Throw over once again. This is going to short hop the first baseman. It's going to be a throwing error on the pitcher to allow the runner to reach second base on the E1. Yeah, short arm that throw over the first. Yeah, he didn't give McKee much of a chance to make a play there. McKee doing enough to uh, sort of keep it in front of him and keep it from getting down the line, which would have been probably two bases on the throwing air. Now the so key coming in at first base. And that's with good speed. Ball tails inside for ball three. And from a fundamental standpoint, though, and with Alamai, you have to wonder, because there's so much, and he's able to repeat that delivery. Checking the runner second, brings it to the plate. Fastball, just a little bit tight, ball four. This strike zone has been much more reflective of the book than we saw last week. First walk issued by St. Thomas Pitching. In fact, I think this is the first walk of the ball game by either team. Had a couple of hit batters issued by Mary Harden Baylor. This is the first walk for St. Thomas Pitching. That pitch catches the outside corner, strike one. No 
balls and one strike. I think he might have might done the splitter again to get a better command of that one. Fastball tails outside and low. One and one the count. Two on, one out here in the top half of the fourth inning. Mary Harden Baylor trying to add to a 6 1 lead. Inside on the hands, gets away briefly. Say does a good job, or C does a good job to keep that from getting back to the screen. Two and one the count. Nine to two hit advantage and a couple of errors by St. Thomas in this one. That ball fouled straight back. Fills the count up at, or evens the count up at two and two. As Alamai checks the runner second, brings it to the plate, inside and low, fills it up at three and two. One thing about Alamai, he's got all of his pitches, done a lot of movement on them, sometimes a little too much movement. Checks the runner second from the stretch, runners on the move. That pitch didn't miss by much. That's ball four. It's going to get away and allow the run to come home from third. The runner would have been safe at second anyway. The home plate umpire really didn't give a quick ball four on the call there as C threw through on a 3-2 count. So a third error of the ball game on the Celts. So it'll be a walk to move the runner to third base. And then advancing... Home on the E2. And runner going to second on the walk and then moving to third on the E2. Ball over the inside corner runner. Ball gets away, so a wild pitch is going to move the runner down to second. One and no count with one out, and Alamai deserving a better fate here, pitching himself into trouble. Checks the runner at third. 7 1 lead for Mary Harden Baylor as that misses. Ball two. And a chance for Mary Harden Baylor really to blow this game open here in the fourth inning. Swing and a miss at a curveball. Two and one the count. See, you know, this young man, the stuff is there. The, the command is still lacking. Iffy. Right. It's lacking at certain times in the count. Runner fakes a break from third. Now scrambles back. Alamai with the pitch. Swing and a miss. And that was the splitter right there. And that was a good one. That's two and two the count. Like they were last. That's a strikeout. That's a strikeout. There's the strikeout number. Five of the ball game yeah, for St. Thomas pitching. Yeah, the first for Alamai. If he can really can if he can harness that splitter, my goodness, he becomes a very big piece of this pitching staff. And now they strike on the inside half of the plate. Oh and one the count. And right handed hitter Red Gross, who has a home run in the ball game. First baseman. Ball in the dirt, gets away from C. It'll allow a run to come home from third on the wild pitch as it will score Talbert. And anything that scores here now is unearned. One ball and no strikes, or one ball and one strike. So they'll say pass ball instead of wild pitch. So it will be an unearned run. Pitch over but low. Two and one to count. Eight one lead for Mary Harden Baylor. Two in the third or two in the second. Four in the third. Two here in the fourth. As that one misses low. Three and one to count. This will be the 28th pitch of the inning for Alamai. 
swinging a foul ball back. Moves the count full three and two with two outs. Riley Bender, the third baseman, waiting on deck, hoping to get in that bat here in the inning. Actually, this is Bender at the plate. I'm sorry, Bender swing takes a pitch just off the outside corner. And it'll bring up Caden Berardini. So another walk in the oh, inning. Number two, Caden Berardini. Third walk issued by Alamai. Puts runners on the corners with two outs. We'll see if Bender might be on the move here. Fastball stays up. There goes Bender. Throw through. It's going to get away. And another run comes home for Mary Harden Baylor. And another error. It will be an E2 to allow the run to come home. Runner will go all the way to third after the stolen base. And the E2. And that will be the third error of the ball game for St. Thomas. In fact, fourth error of the ball game for the Celts. Third of the inning. And right now, this one's slipping away from the Celts. Swing and a miss. One and one to count. To DeBardini's. Well, the three walks. So Alamai's Alama done some of the damage to himself, but he's not gotten a lot of good defense around him. As the Crusaders have run wild on the bases here. Swing and a miss as it got him in on the hands. One and two the count. Left-handed hitter against the right-handed reliever, the third pitcher to work in the ball game for St. Thomas. Slowly grounded, second base side. Coming in, Smith bobbles it. That's going to be the fourth error of the inning and it allows another run to come home for Mary Harden Baylor and now extend the lead out to 10-1. to one. And sort of well, nonchalanting that one, Smith. That would have been an easy play to end the inning. Trying to play a short hop. It got a little bit of a bad hop right there as he's trying to play it on the short hop. And Number 48, I couldn't that, take that short hop I, out of play. I'd say the wheels have come off of the wheels, the axle, the rotor, transmission, everything that can come out underneath the vehicle is having problems right now. And Alamai has had an extended inning here. And this UM HB team is already good enough without you know, giving them runs. Alamai with a fastball stayed a little bit up. To Carson Riley, the catcher. This is a pitch number 35 for the right hander. And he's, he's had to work. Ball fouled straight back, one and one to count to the former Panther out of Liberty Hill. Very good baseball program in that 4A classification. Leaning but getting back. Alamai the throw over to check DeBardini back to first base. He should be on the move here with two outs, even with the big lead. Leaning, not going, foul straight back to the screen. One and two the count. And you look at the Liberty Hill program, it's always going to be in that cup situation where at the 4A level with all sports, they're just so good across the board. And a fastball catches the outside corner and mercifully the inning comes to an end as eight batters come to the plate. Four runs come home. On four errors for St. Thomas, they leave a runner on base. Does Mary Harden Baylor to extend out to a 10-1 lead and three hits in the inning, and that, or two hits in the inning, and that will do it for the Crusaders. 10-1 lead for Mary Harden.
back live here from Houston, Texas, as we play into the bottom half of the fourth inning. Nobody on, nobody out for St. Thomas, and a lot of work to do here for the Celts, already trailing at 10 to 1. And defensively, just a disastrous inning there for St. Thomas. And right now, Keegan Simons goes into his fourth inning here in his starting assignment. He's now retired seven straight Kelt batters coming in his inning. Swing and a miss by Manzel. Owen won the count. He is a strikeout victim back in the first inning, 0 for 1. Simons in a very good rhythm, and he's working very quickly here against these Kelts hitters. Right-hander from Concordia Lutheran brings it to the plate. Foul back, strike two. Over the St. Thomas dugout, occupying the first base side here at John Ray Harrison Field. This facility has been here for more than 30-plus years on the north side of Houston. Fastball stays up, ball one. And it has seen a lot of baseball players, including Andy Pettit, who the park is named after here, come through this program. Did not offer at a curveball away. Two and two the count. Yeah, Manziel would like to get on base and start something here. Just held a swing right here. Manziel, the former Bulldog, got a Summer Creek High School in Noble ISD. Swinging a pop-up. Foul back. To the screen, and that ball is going to hit just short of the wall. No play left there for Riley as he chased back on that one. Count holding it two and two. Right-handed hitter against the right-handed starter. The wind has calmed down quite a bit. You look at the flags, it was not, they're not blowing nearly as hard as it was at the beginning of the game. But still blowing out to left as that ball lined. First base side, first base and giving chase, but will not be able to get there. So Manzel uh, able to get a couple of swings here. Well, I said that then 10 seconds later, you see the flag start to blow once again, maybe about 10 miles an hour as opposed to 30, as opposed to 25 <laughs> earlier in the game. Yeah, before it so got to, dusk so, here. So still a nice breeze, but not, again, not blowing as hard as it was. Not that jet stream out to left field. We saw a gross ride one out of here. Out in left center field. Manzel takes a pitch. Ooh, wow. wow. Yeah. That ball was well off the plate. And Manzel looking back at the home by umpire. He can't <laughs> believe it. And he's getting warned here. But that ball was not even close to a strike. Strikeout number four of the ball game for Simons. And that's the first of the four to be uh, called third strike. Now Tori Peterson coming in to talk to the home plate umpire. Yeah, the home plate umpire, he's going – I don't think he's going to argue the balls and strike. I think he's basically going to say to protect his player and, and defend his player here, hey, what would you see there? Yeah, very brief conversation. Well, we saw Tory Peterson get really upset on a call yeah, last was, week. Yeah, he was very close to getting a run from that game. You know, that was just a very polite conversation. He'll head back down to third. As curveball swing and a miss. He was really by fooled. Trent. Really fooled on the break. He's looking for the fastball right there, and he got the off speed pitch, got really fooled. No balls and one strike with one out. Nobody on here for St. Thomas. Ground ball, third base side, and underneath the glove of the third baseman. He went Ole on that one on Bender. Now, It'll be an E5. Didn't get the glove all the way down, right through the wickets. First error of the ball game against. The Mary Hart Baylor Crusaders. And we'll see if that can open up the door for something here for the Celts. As it'll bring up Augie Anderson, the designated hitter. Anderson, the freshman out of Woodlands Christian High School or Woodlands Christian Academy. <laughs> wow. That's a fastball called yeah. strike one on the outside corner. Yeah, his zone expanding, expanding, a little bit, expanding a little bit here in this inning. Saw it with strike three to Manzel on that pitch. Looked at least a few inches off the plate. Manzel, or the runner at first base, Trent not leading too far away. Yeah, that was a quick move. Like you said, Trent was only a couple of steps off the bag. No balls and one strike with one out. 
ball in the dirt. Good stop of it to keep that in front by Riley. One and one to count. And Thomas will be on the road once again, coming off a trip to Bellhaven in Mississippi last weekend when they lost two of three. So a line drive to center field. Center field will have to play it on a short hop. That ball hit hard right back up the middle. Anderson hitting it where it was pitched from. Third hit for St. Thomas. And like Dave Berdini took it maybe a step back and then had to try to come in quickly and just couldn't get there. So a couple of base runners here now for the Kelts here near the bottom of the order. There's eight, nine hitters due up. It'll bring up to shortstop Armando Rocha, who is 0 for 1 with a fly out to right. Checking the runner at second. Simons in the dirt. Ball gets away. Runner from first. Well off the bag. The throw behind the runner. He's safe. Able to get in the back door. Almost ran up the runner at second base. Yeah, I got a little far down that first base line. Had to scramble back. Did a good job kind of going around the tag. Yeah, you don't want to get thrown out as a trail runner in that situation. Not trying to advance. One out of the count with one out. Swinging a line drive. Right fielder over is going to make this play easily. They'll tag it second with no advancement there by Anderson. Yeah, or Trent. Hit pretty well, but right yeah, at yeah, Talbert, the right fielder, Talbert. Yeah, Talbert coming in very quickly and no chance for the runner at second base trying to advance. Yeah, you see a concerted effort there by Rocha trying to go the other way. Two outs now in the inning. And it'll be up to Israel Fields to try to get something out of the inning. Fields swing and a miss. That swing a little bit long there by Fields. Has a little bit of a hole in that on the left side of the infield. He might be better off trying to cut down and maybe go the other way. Senior out of New Orleans takes a curveball in the dirt for ball one. One and one the count. Left-handed hitter against the right-handed starter. Brings it to the plate. Field swings and misses the head of that one. One and two the count. Well, they're breaking ball down and away. And again, Field's trying to go for a three-run home run there. Let's Center field is shading just slightly away to the left-hand side. Ball lined towards center field. Right fielder coming over will have the play. And underneath it is Talbert to secure the final out of the inning. St. Thomas, an error and a hit. They leave two on base. 10-1 the lead for Mary Harden Baylor as we head to the top half of the fifth inning here.
Nobody on, nobody out here in the bottom half of the sixth inning for St. Thomas. As Alex Trin will lead it off, the third baseman. Leading off for the count, third baseman, number 10, Alex Trin. It'll be Trin, Anderson, and Rocha do in the inning. As the fastball stays up and away for ball one, two Trin from Keenan. Tremendous night for Keegan Simons. As a fastball misses away, ball one. Simon's only allowing the one first inning run in his five innings of work. Fastball tails away, ball two, ball three. Not close on that pitch. And right now, Trent trying to get something started here for St. Thomas. 3 0 count with nobody out. That fastball splits the heart of the plate, strike one. Taking all the way. Two balls and one strike with nobody out. Fastball way up and down, ball four. Yeah, but that is the first walk for Crusader pitching in the ball game. Yeah, yeah they've done a good job other than hit batters. Well, they had the three, right? They had the three hit batters. That's to bring up Augie Anderson. There's almost all the defensive players have, have left the ball game and been changed out. So we'll have a new lineup there. Line drive by Anderson. This ball to the gap in right center field and back toward the wall and deep. It's going to be off the wall. It'll go for a double as that ball was laced to the gap in right center field. That is the fifth hit of the ball game for the Celts. And now a chance for St. Thomas to try to chip away at this lead with nobody out. Yeah, it's far and away the best swing. We've seen a Kelt put on a pitch here from the crew. Checking runner at third. Fastball stays up. Ball one. Armando Rocha, the shortstop. Over two with a pair of flyouts to ride in the ball game. Right has been busy in this ball game for Mary Harden Baylor. Curveball tried to aim that one, stayed away, ball two. Two balls, no strikes, nobody out. Two in scoring position for St. Thomas. As a fastball stays away, ball three. Your coach Mike Strosky, this is the last thing you wanted to see. Is your reliever come in after five solid innings from Simons and Put the first two runners on, threatening to load the bases here with the three and zero count. With nobody out, be taking a pitch here. Fastball inside corner at the belt, strike one. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if Roca takes another. Like we we'll have a pinch hitter for Fields. As Keenan checks the runner, second pop up, center fielder ranging in. Runner at third will tag, but hold at third base on the out. One out now in the inning. Runners will hold at second and third. The on the fly out to Dax center. Massingale. And Dax Massingale will be the pinch hitter for Fields. So Fields out of the ball game as Massengill. Massengill so far 0 for 3 as a hitter just so far on the season. As that pitch misses up and away for ball one. Massengill, a freshman infielder out of Clear Springs High School, the former Charger.
from the stretch, bringing it to the plate, swing a line drive. It's going to drop in for a base hit. This is going to score at least one. They'll turn the runner from third and ball getting away. It doesn't affect the play anyway. The runner was coming home, and it'll be a two-run single. That plates a pair of runs for St. Thomas. And we'll have another pinch hitter as Eric Garza will bat here for Bearden. And so a pinch hit RBI single makes it a 14 to three ball game. And right now, if you're St. Thomas, you're trying to work this out of a run rule situation as a fastball stays up and away for ball one. One ball and no strikes as a pinch hitter here for Kyle Bearden. Fastball on the outside corner, Eric Garza. And we'll have a pinch hitter for, Ger for Gerard Smith. Garza, the senior out of El Paso Community College out of Houston, Texas. Fastball misses away. The catcher didn't do a good job really trying to frame that pitch. Two balls and one strike. Checking runner at first base, short lead, not going anywhere. Ball hammered straight up in the air. The pitcher trying to take over and just get out of the way. Let the third baseman try to make the play and can't make the play. They'll get the force at second base nonetheless. And I don't know what the pitcher was thinking he was going to do there. Yeah, no, unfortunately, nothing that the runner Massigal could do right there. He had to hold, had to go halfway. So, so Fielder's Choice will allow Garza to reach first base. It'll be 5-4 on the putout to retire Massingale at second. Two outs now in yeah. the inning. That's to be Travis Gully, the pinch hitter here for Smith. As Gully steps to the plate from the right side, takes a curveball away for ball one. Gully, the freshman out of Fayetteville High School. Fastball on the outside corner, one and one to count. Garza not really a threat to go at first base with two away, but the hole on the right side, a place for Gully to shoot out there. Curveball swing and a miss, one and two. If I remember correctly, Fayetteville, a 3A or 2A program. I believe they're a 2A program. I don't think they play football either. Gully, by the way, one for two. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Swing and a foul ball, just enough of that to stay alive by Gully. The count holding it one and two. Trying to keep the inning going here. And keep the train going with two runs home in the inning for St. Thomas. First time they have scored since the opening inning when they took a one nothing lead. Between it's all Mary Harden Baylor, a 14 straight run, swing and a miss as he misses the curveball and strikes out. And that will do it for St. Thomas. But they get a pair of runs. On two hits. One runner left on base, 14-3, to three, the lead for Mary Harden Baylor. After six complete here from Houston, back after this on Coopersports.net.
Coach Larry, as Ross making his second appearance of the year. We saw him in the game last Tuesday night, just worked a third of an inning, an ERA of 40.5 hook, or very elevated because the only pitch only has one at, recorded two outs. Five, at least it wasn't infinity. Yeah five, yeah, five hits, three runs all earned, no walks, and one strikeout in that outing for Ross. And a lot of new players out there for St. Thomas. A lot of substitutions in there. And a side hold you infield. Hold you infield. As it is Armando Rocha staying in there. He is the only one staying in the small game. McKee still in at first base. But I think replacements at second and, and at third base. For sure at second. There's a ground ball past the second baseman. And... Your second baseman in there is Travis Gully. Stays in the ball game after pinch hitting. So a runner on first base, one pitch into the inning. As that was Drake Herrera, fourteenth hit of the ball game for the Mary Harden Baylor Crusaders. As bring up Ryan Farmer batting now in the two spot. There is a strike called. No balls, one strike to count to Farmer. Good breaking ball there from Ross. Gets a swing and a miss. No balls and two strikes to count. Fastball misses off the plate away. Alpha playing basically straight away here for Farmer. Senior out of Pearland Dawson High School. The ball is down in the dirt. Good scoop of that one by Jackson Rogers, the new catcher. Came in the last inning. Former Montgomery Bear, but Lake Creek has really taken over the reins in Montgomery Highest. He is the and even more so in softball, the back-to-back five -back A state champions. A ball fouled ball back. Pops foul and out of play. But you talk about Montgomery. It's sort of what we go back to when College Park was opened up in the Woodlands. It took a couple of years of adjustment for the Woodlands to get themselves righted back up with the number of people that were moved. Off College Park Drive. 2-2 Two -two pitch. Misses down and away, and the count goes full. And with Montgomery opening up Lake Creek toward the Magnolia area, sort of an area where it draws from Montgomery a little bit away from Magnolia ISD in that 149 area. Payoff pitch on the ground to third. They go to second for one on the first and two. Nice out. job turning the double play there. They go around the horn, 5-4-3. Now two outs in the inning with nobody on. First double play of the ball game for either team. Yeah, pitches. Down and away. To Staten Dudley, now batting in the three spot. That ball is going to be hit to short. Scooped by Roca, throw off the, off the bag. And I never say he was off the bag, so it's going to be another error in the ball game. So throwing air, the E6 will allow Dudley to reach. And now we'll have Samuel. That is now seven errors on the ball game for St. Thomas. All for that. And, and they'll say, say a swing for yeah. strike one. Jaden Chapman, the batter. And they are emptying the benches here on both sides. 
No one won the count. The down away, that's going to get away from Rogers. A wild pitch will allow Dudley to move up to second base. Chapman, a junior out of Flower Mound High School in the Louisville area, former Jaguar. Turned on a very nice night for baseball. There was a slight chance of rain, but we have not had any precipitation. That ball grounded and fielded at second base and a bobble and will not be a play left. Another error for St. Thomas. That will be the eighth error of the ball game against the and we'll put runners on the corners against the Celts. And you just you can't magnify eight errors. There's just there's nothing you can say that is going to make that sting go away. So Kyle Hogwood will be the batter. Breaking ball misses low. Wow, didn't miss by much. The Dudley over at third. Chapman is the runner at first. Count well. One and zero here to Hogwood. Bouncer foul back to the third base. Senior on deck circle. Senior out of North Forney High School. A Metroplex area product. That ball is in the dirt, ball two. I tried to get a curveball over there, but overthrew it. Well, it's gave a bully off single raced on the double play, but back-to-back -back errors, but runners on the corners. Fastball caught the top of the zone. And the count moves to two balls and two strikes. That ball is going to be lined out deep to left field. This ball is trouble, and it's going to go off the wall. And that will score one, and they will hold the runner at third base. RBI double off the bat of Hogwood. That will make it 15-3. to three. Fifteenth hit of the ball game for Mary Harden Baylor. And obviously that run will be unearned. And now Mike Williams is going to go out to talk to his battery here. They'll bring the whole infield in. Tyler Martin will be the batter. And I think that was not the call pitch they wanted there. I'd left a fastball up. So a quick word there, and Coach Mike Williams headed back towards the dugout. So Tyler Martin will be the batter. So the first visit of the inning by the St. Thomas Celts pitching coach. The junior out of Katy High School. I saw the great our longtime head coach, Tom McPherson, retire a couple of years ago. Les Hearn now in his second year as the head coach of the Tigers. And yeah, Mondo Sedano over at Langham Creek, his final year is headed in retirement after the conclusion of this season. We saw Woody Champagne retire from Cy Fair a couple of years ago. Got 0-1 here to Martin. Or is it second and third? Breaking ball and a beauty swung on and missed by Martin. I think the Mike Williams came out to just say, trust your stuff. Use the curveball if you can. This run is unearned for Ross. The two errors in the inning. Breaking ball, check swing, and right back to Ross. And he'll glove it to end the inning. Well, one comes in on one hit. There were two errors and two runners left on base. Bottom of the seventh inning coming up here from San Jacinto College. It is 15-3 in favor of Mary Harden Baylor on Cooper Sports.
and back live here from Houston, Texas. We go into the bottom half of the seventh inning for St. Thomas, trailing at 15 to three. And new pitcher on for the University of Mary Hart and Baylor Crusaders out of Belton, Texas. And that new pitcher is Cameron Bogan out of Tomball High School. Another one of the great programs here in the greater Houston area. Well, you get up in that area, you've got Magnolia West that won the 5A state title a year ago. And you talk about Tomball, Magnolia, Montgomery, Montgomery, Lake Creek. And, of course, the reigning 5A champions from Magnolia West. And they, they, they had problems getting, get, just getting out of district with Lake Creek. And also Magnolia High School gave them one of their losses during the regular season. Just tremendous baseball on the north, northwest side of Houston. There's Jackson Rogers, his first A-B of the game, and he came in as a defensive replacement for C. Fastball right down the pike for strike one. They're in the bottom of the seventh, 15 to three. One pitch is going to be fouled down the right side, quickly 0-2. And, and we understand the coaches may be playing this one all the way out with this midweek game to see as many bodies out there as they can. 0-2 offering, foul back to the screen. The count will hold. Rogers, a big right-handed hitter. Out of Montgomery High School. O2 pitch misses with a slider down her way. Yeah, tried a sweeping slider there, and that one missed badly. Rogers not offering at that one, that O2 pitch. 74 on that off speed delivery. <laughs> that might have been generous. 1 2 pitch popped foul down the first baseline and going out of play. Yeah, over the St. Thomas dugout on the first base side. A lot of blue now here, what used to be the home of the San Jacinto Gators, now San Jacinto Ravens. Here's a one two offering. Fouled once again, so Rogers doing a good job fighting off some tough pitches to stay alive. You take out the two most prolific Ravens programs, which is women's volleyball and men's basketball. The history of men's basketball is undoubted, and very you, similar to the baseball program. And you tore down the gym in which those two programs competed in for over 30 years. Uh, basically a meadow on the campus of Central Campus. In Pasadena, foul yeah, ball back. So again, Rogers able to fight off some tough pitches and making Bogan work a little bit. It was just interesting the way that played itself out when they decided that they didn't want to do any more improvements to Anders Gymnasium. And then they had to start parsing the programs out. And a breaking ball misses down and away. Because they had to do it equally no matter what happened. Two two pitch. Again fouled away. So, so this is turning into a long at bat, closing but in on ten pitches. I believe this is the ninth pitch of this A B. But you left the baseball program up here on the north side. The south side had the softball program that had the renovations at the softball facility. 2-2 Two -two pitch, fouled away again. So. And each campus had their own mascot. This one was the Gators. Central yeah, campus was the Ravens. And the south campus was Coyotes. But they've taken the Coyotes' colors and distributed it through Another the two, two, two programs. The 2-2 two, two pitch, got him on the hands, fouled it off again. That's 11 pitches now in this at-bat. Jackson Rogers determined to keep us here a little while longer. That's doing a nice job again, fighting off some pitches that are in the zone. And it's over through the fastball, down and away, it's three and two. This is turning into a really good at-bat for Rogers. Well, no matter the outcome of the at-bat, this is exactly what you want Rodgers to do, make a reliever work so you can see his pitches 
if this was a closer, let's just say this was a 5-3 ball game instead of 15-3, to you really would be doing exactly what you want the batter to be doing here. So, so Sanchez waiting on deck. He'll bat for McKee as Corey Peterson getting a look at some more of his backups. Here's the payoff pitch. And finally, he strikes out. So, so Rodgers goes down looking. So Sanchez will bat and stay in the game to replace McKee. So Sanchez, a sophomore out of North Shore High School, so a local product. So we had a guy from a kid from Hawaii pitching, and now a young man who played basically a mile from this facility over at the North Shore Mustang Field. Yeah, you can see the ninth grade campus and GPISD Stadium right across the way uh, from here. Well, this is actually the senior campus over here. The ninth grade campus south of here. And that ball is lifted foul down the and slicing away from the field of play. One ball, one strike. And this has been the area of growth over here was, is the North Shore side, not the Galena Park side of GPISD. The ball hit on the ground to second. Throw on the first in time for out number two. So 4-3 ground out. Well, nobody on two away here for the University of St. Thomas. And Irving Monegro came in to play right field. We'll get an A-B here. That is a Bronx, New York game. <laughs> that fits perfectly right there. Now the St. Raymond's High School in the Bronx. So first A-B for Monegro. He'll take a pitch right down the heart for strike one. Nobody on two away here in the bottom half of the seventh. And foul back to the screen, and the count goes to 0-2. Pretty good cut on a pitch up in the zone. No balls, two strikes to count. And the pitch, breaking ball, misses off the plate away. Yeah, didn't miss by much there on a sweeping curveball. Try to try to slide her on the outside half of the plate. One and two here to Manegro. And then when misses down and away, good job by Manegro to lay off. They try the appeal down at first, but no swing. And the 2-2 pitch. And he did offer that time. And chase the high fastball, and that will do it. As That's going to do the game.
Campus of San Jacinto College as the final score here, seven innings run rule, 15 to three in favor of the University of Mary Harden Baylor Crusaders. For the crew, 15 runs on 14 hits. They had one error. They left stranded six runners on base. For the St. Thomas Celts, they had six run or three runs on six hits. They committed eight errors and they strand eight runners on base. The winning pitcher Keegan Simons, he's now one and zero on the year. Sebastian Solis takes the loss. He drops to zero and one. Game's only home run was hit by Rhett Groves, his first of the year. Game took two hours and thirty minutes, and you had St. Thomas taking the lead with a run at the top of the first, but then the crew took the lead for good with two in the in the second inning, then they added four in each of the third, fourth, and fifth innings to take full control of this one, and they go on to win it 15-3. to three. A good outing on the mound from Simons and you know, hitting up and down the lineup for this very good team. They've moved their record now on the season to 7-0. and oh. Next up for the crew as we'll look at the schedule ahead. Well, we'll look ahead for St. Thomas. This weekend, they'll head to the Hendricks to take and then the following weekend, they will be back at home. That'll be our next broadcast. That'll be from Rice University. That'll be a three-game series on March the 8th through March the 10th, or March the 8th and March the 9th, Friday. A single game on Friday, and then a doubleheader on Saturday afternoon against Hardin Simmons. So that'll be the next home series for the St. Thomas Celts. Again, they'll be on the road at Hendricks next weekend, and then back home to continue the non-conference schedule against Harden Simmons, and for Mary Harden Baylor, we're waiting for the. Again, they move now to seven and zero on the year. We're waiting for the. In fact, we'll go ahead and. We will go ahead and end our broadcast for the night. We thank everybody for tuning in to Celts baseball here tonight. It's once again your final score. It is Mary Harden Baylor winning it by a score of fifteen to three. For Larry Cooper, this is Colin Nickel from the campus of San Jacinto College wishing everybody a safe and pleasant Tuesday night.